While we're in the north, I want to talk about one of my favorite castles of the Watch. The greatest and oldest of the 19 strongholds built by the Night's Watch is the Night Fort. Once the chief seat of the Watch, over the centuries the castle was expanded on many times to the point where little remained of its original structure except for some of the deepest vaults that were chiseled out of the rock beneath the castle's feet. The Night Fort is the only castle where the steps were cut from the ice of the wall itself. Other castles of the Night's Watch made their steps from wood, stone, or long ramps of earth and gravel. Which, in hindsight, was probably a better idea because since the creation of the stairs at the Night Fort, the ice steps have melted and refrozen a thousand times over, shrinking each time and becoming more treacherous to navigate as they become smoother and rounder. Despite this castle being the oldest and greatest and chief seat of the Night's Watch at one time, eventually Alisane Targaryen gave the Night's Watch jewels to pay for the construction of a new castle. Deep Lake. As the Night's Watch had decreased in size, the Night Fort was too costly and large to maintain. So Deep Lake served as its replacement, and they abandoned the Night Fort 200 years ago. The gate the castle had guarded was sealed the day the Black Brothers departed for Deep Lake, taking with them supplies, books, and anything else of use. Its iron gate was lowered, and the chains that raised it carried off, and the tunnel packed with stone and rubble frozen together to make getting through near impossible. In the books, Bran, Mira, Jojen, and Hodor would stop at this castle, and Stannis wanted to rule from it after coming to the Wall. However, he found it would take half a year to make it livable. Bran described the Night Fort when he came there with Mira, Jojen, and Hodor. Some of the towers had fallen down, and others looked unsafe. When they climbed the bell tower, they noticed the bells were gone, and in the rookery, the birds were gone as well. Beneath the brew house, they found a vault of huge oaken casks completely empty. They found a library, the shelves and bins had collapsed, the books were gone, and rats were everywhere. They found a dank and dim-lit dungeon, with cells enough to hold 500 captives. But when Bran grabbed one of the rusted bars, it broke off in his hand. Only one crumbling wall remained of the Great Hall. The bathhouse seemed to be sinking into the ground, and a huge thorn bush had conquered the practice yard outside the armory, where Black Brothers had once labored with spear and shield and sword. The armory in the forge still stood, however, though cobwebs, rats, and dust had taken the places of blades, bellows, and anvil. The kitchen was a stone octagon with a broken dome and huge brick ovens, rusted meat hooks, and scars and stains from the butcher's block along one wall. The kitchen also had a crooked werewood bursting through the slate floor slanting towards the hole in the roof. However, this weirwood was a tad different than most weirwoods. Despite having the typical bone-white branches, it was skinnier than most and faceless. Perhaps the most unnerving thing about the castle is the magical subterranean black gate that allows passage from one side of the wall to the other. This gate is a glowing door made of white weirwood with white eyes. When approaching this gate, the eyes will open white and blind, and the gate will ask, Who are you? A man of the Night's Watch must repeat part of his vow, and then the door will open, saying, then pass. While the lips of the door open wider and wider until nothing remains but a great gaping mouth and a ring of wrinkles. But one wonders, was the only reason they abandoned the castle the cost? Or was it for far more sinister reasons? It is now described as a haunted ruin and a dreadful and drear place. So now let's take a look at the incredibly rich and dark history of the Night Fort before it was abandoned. This castle is no stranger to dark events. It saw the Night's King, the 13th Lord Commander of the Night's Watch, come to power and rule from it. Some say the Night's King was a Bolton, others an Umber, a Flint, a Nori, a Woodfoot, or even a Stark. But the story is the same. The man fell in love with a sorceress as pale as a corpse, believed to be an other, though some say a daughter of a Barrow King, and he married her. Declaring himself King, he ruled with her as King and Queen at the Night Fort for 13 years. During this time, they sacrificed to the others and used terrible magic to bind his sworn brothers to his will until the King of Winter, Brandon the Breaker, along with the King Beyond the Wall, Jormun, destroyed them both. Afterwards, the name of the Night's King was erased from history. One reason is probably all the terrible things he did at the Night Fort. However, that wasn't the only time a man would rise from the Night Fort to rule. 600 years ago, the commanders at Snowgate and the Night Fort went to war against each other, and when the Lord Commander tried to stop them, 
they joined forces and murdered him. The Stark King at the time had to go to the Wall and behead them both, adding another bloody end for a would-be leader. Still, there are other horrors that occurred in and around this castle. Some fairly minor, such as the First Men King, King Sherret, who called down a curse on the Andals from the Night Fort. Or a man named Arson Ice Axe, who was discovered by rangers from the Night Fort digging a tunnel through the wall. He was halfway through when they found him, and not wishing to disturb his digging, the men sealed the way behind him with ice, stone, and snow. Legend goes that if you press your ear flat to the wall, you can still hear him chipping away with his axe. Still, there's more frightening stories, such as the Rat Cook a cook of the night fort that had some vendetta against a visiting Andal king and his son. In this story, the rat cook grabbed the prince, killed him, and cooked the boy in a big pie with onions, carrots, mushrooms, peppers, and salt, bacon, and a dark red Dornish wine. Then he served the pie to the Andal king, who had praised the taste and asked for a second slice. The gods then punished the cook not for murder, but for breaking guests right. They transformed the cook into a giant white rat who could only eat his own young, and it is believed he is still at the night fort, consuming his children with a hunger that is never sated. Then there is the tale of this lovely castle and the demise of the 79 Sentinels. Story goes, before Aegon the Conqueror ever came to Westeros, 79 men from the night fort deserted and went south to be outlaws. One of these deserters was the youngest son of Lord Riswell, and the boy mistakenly thought his fellow outlaws could seek shelter at his father's castle. That was not the case, and Lord Riswell took them all captive and returned them to the Night Fort. The Lord Commander had holes made in the top of the wall. He then gave each man a horn and spear, placed them in the holes facing north, and sealed them up. From that day forth, they were called the 79 Sentinels. They had left their post in life, so in their death, their watch would go on and on. Mad Axe is another chilling story that takes place at this castle. He was a black brother serving at the Night Fort, and one night, something made Mad Axe snap. He went inside the castle, took off his boots, and began to prowl the halls barefoot in the dark with his axe. He never made a sound to let you know where he was. The only thing you'd hear was the drops of blood that fell from his axe, elbows, and the end of his wet red beard. He chopped up his brothers in the night, butchering them. Then there is brave young Danny Flint. Deciding she wanted to join the Black Brothers, Danny Flint disguised herself as a boy, but when she was found out, her fellow Black Brothers did not treat her so kindly. Instead of accepting her or shipping her back to be dealt with by Lord Stark, they raped and murdered the girl. With such a traumatizing death and perhaps not wanting to leave her duty, it's believed her ghost still walks the night fort. Still, there are other occurrences here that have no real explanation. Young apprentice boys claim to have faced the thing that came in the night, but what was this thing? No one knows as the boys all gave different descriptions of the creature, and it could be easily dismissed as boys seeing things. However, all three of the boys died in a year of seeing the creature, and the fourth boy that claimed to have also seen it went mad. But death wasn't the end for these boys. A hundred years later, the thing came again. The apprentice boys could be seen behind it, all in chains and shambling along. How many had this thing claimed before the boys faced it? How many does it continue to claim? Then there's Star Eyes, a blind knight who put star sapphires in his empty sockets, who claimed to see hellhounds fight. So I will ask you again, was the night fort abandoned for logical and monetary reasons? Or because that place is super haunted and the Night's Watch got tired of all the crazy shenanigans happening there. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about the Night Fort. Thank you for watching, please like the video, subscribe, and come back for more sci-fi fantasy content.